everybody, Lee Browning here from Stuff To Do. We run a website called Stuff To Do At Home dot com. Um, in an earlier video, I talked about the three ways that we're uh, trying to change the world um, via our vehicle of Stuff To Do At Home dot com, democratization of the web, demonstrating a different way to work, and sharing our profits. Um, so there's videos on all of these. Uh, this one is about uh, demonstrating a different way to work. I'd just like to tell you a bit more about it. Um, now, why did I ever feel that we needed a different way to work? This is pre-coronavirus, by the way. Well, I spent 20 years in corporate environments. When I say corporate, I mean corporate, global, blue chips, FTSE 100 companies, those kinds of things. And I was in management roles, and I was also in marketing and commercial, which if you've ever worked in that sector or, you know, people who have, you'll know it's deadline driven and, um, you know, you're trying to hit targets and budgets and all of these things. So um, I always felt as I when I worked in corporate that if I had been allowed to shape my role a bit differently or allowed to work more flexibly, that actually I would have been a lot more productive for the business not that I wasn't productive I made many millions of pounds for a lot of organizations but it was exhausting in many different ways and in the end I, I opted out and um, I was succession planned into a directorship and I just thought no it will it will kill me it will be the death of me so I opted out and I went off and did other things and I'm very glad I did because I learned a lot anyway back to a different way to work so when I started Stuff To Do, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to end up running a big corporation and I can't think of anything worse than that. <laughs> I just don't want to go back to a corporate lifestyle. And I thought, well, why do I have to? So, here's what we're doing. First of all, everyone works remotely. And um, yes, because of the coronavirus, we have to, but we're not going to change it. Um, that means we don't have the overheads of a head office, so also it means we've got more profit that we can give back, which is one of, one of our other ways we want to change the world. Um, if people want to get together when they are able to, because they want to do some brainstorm or get creative, then we can, you know, there's loads of great flexible space out there now, creative spaces, so we'll just hire, uh, hire places for them to do that. Um, but the advantage of working remotely is that we can work with people from all over the world. So we've got people writing for us from Nigeria, from Scotland, from South Africa, um, you know, Surrey, uh, everywhere really. So <laughs> we couldn't do that if we weren't all remotely, if we weren't set up to work remotely. And the other thing we do is we work completely flexibly, flexible on days, flexible on hours. Um, we really don't mind when people want to give us their time. It's absolutely fine. Technology these days means that, you know, you're always connected all the time if you need to be. And the reason we do that is because people will always be more productive if they are working at the time they have most energy or uh, most headspace or most ability to focus. So why should we be trying to shoehorn them into Monday to Friday 9 to 5? Um, it works for very few people in my experience and it certainly doesn't work for me. So since I've adopted a flexible model, I typically I don't work between one and three because that's the time I'm least productive and my head doesn't really work very well. And since I've stopped doing that, I have loads more energy and loads more passion and loads more enjoyment of my job. That's, a, that's something else we're doing in, in working differently. And it's at the more radical end of things, and I suppose this is a, a, a bit of an agile way to work. So if you know anything about agile, it's, it's quite similar when you get to the extremes of agile. Um, we try and fit the job around the person. So rather than saying, and this was something I experienced in corporate because I was in management roles. So, you know, oh, look, we've got a creative person. How brilliant. We're going to put them in essentially a creative role. But we're also going to ask them on the side to do all of this admin and all of this mechanical work and all of, you know, this other stuff. And the fact of the matter is, is if you're creative, that's very hard to do. You're probably not very good at it either, because I know I'm not. Um, and also it kills your creativity because you're having to switch from right brain to left brain. And none of that is um, really conducive to, to, to being as creative as you could possibly be. So... There's no reason at all why you couldn't say, well, hang on, do you know what? Why don't I just do the really creative bit of this job? 
And then why don't we find someone who's really good at the other bit? And that can be their job. So our roles might not be completely traditional, um, uh, and maybe they're sort of hybrid, or people pick things up on a project-by-project project basis depending on what suits them the best or what they're able uh, to commit to or what they would enjoy the most. Um, but it's hugely effective. It's hugely effective. We want people to love what they do. So it's really important that people get to shape the roles in the way that suits them. Um, the fourth thing we do in demonstrating a different way to work, which is linked to this and also supports it, is we have job pools of jobs, so we pool our jobs. So for example, I'm a co-CEO. I have a I work with another CEO, Sarah Gracewood. And um, she is an she is an operational powerhouse. You know she's absolutely brilliant at the nuts and bolts and keeping it all ticking over and moving really brilliantly. And um, I am more of a creative ideas relationships person. So she manages the internal, I manage the external, and by and large, you know the whole thing is is it works really really well. Um, so so that supports shaping jobs around people. But the other thing it does is it prevents burnout because. Obviously, leadership is a really, they, these are really big roles, there's a lot to do. Certainly, if I had to do everything that Sarah and I do as a partnership, um, I honestly think I probably would shy away from that. That would be too much uh, for one person to do. Um, so, we avoid burnout, we avoid exhaustion, we have the um, wonderful safety net of knowing there's someone else there to help you out if it all gets a bit too much. Um, and we're really seeing some really good, productive, uh, sparky partnerships starting to build up in the business, not just my own with Sarah, but other ones too. So these are different ways to work. We're a bit of a Petri dish because we only incorporated on the, the 18th of March 2020. So let's see what happens. But early indications are that it's brilliant. Um, and we'll be tracking it really carefully over the coming months and years. And um, let's see where we end up, but uh, so far so good.